Chuck, and this is episode 209 of the Ask Gary V Show. Uh, we continue with the Facebook Live concept, which means the questions will be coming in the comment section. India will connect, and as you can see, we have a guest again, uh, which excites me. India, how are you doing? Good. You just said right before camera that you were excited yeah. about the show, and I saw you really excited, and you said, no, not really. I was just kidding, because I said I was excited in a very dull voice, and right. suddenly I wasn't excited. Got it. So, so that's that's just, that was just how you roll. That's just how I talk, yeah. My man, why don't you tell uh, the Vayner Nation uh, who you are? Yes. And, uh, and then we'll get into the show. And I hear uh, India just informed me you were going to ask the first question, which excites me. And so I'm ready to go. It's a good day. Uh, Stefan Drill, Stefan, <laughs> zoom in. Can you zoom in here? Oh, I wonder right. if, you can, if you can get it. Uh, Stefan elbowed me today in basketball, so I continue to be injured. I had a black eye. Luckily, I was traveling because the black eye got really bad. Um, do you got it? I got it. Right. So that hurts. It was an accident. That's you, awesome. You get way more injured in your world. I, I try not to. <laughs> Have you ever really been injured? Um. I've had a concussion, which I think is probably as bad of an yeah. uh, injury as you'd want, but uh, um, nothing major. I'm a NASCAR driver. My name is Landon Castle. I drive the number 38 car in the NASCAR Sprint Cup Series. So That's a big deal. That's my life. It's crazy. Yeah. So what? Before we get into the show, uh, what about two, two minutes on that? Like, for, where were you born? Like from, I, I always, you know, it's funny with NASCAR. I always think that you have to be in the game at like when you're five or six or seven to get to that kind of level. Is that true? Like, do you, do you drive better? Yeah, I think so. I mean, I, I, honestly, where, where, though, where did you, you grow up? I grew up in Iowa. I'm from, I'm from Cedar Rapids, Iowa. Um, but I mean, I think in anything you have to get your ten thousand hours in. So, yeah. um, but I grew up at you a young like age. You like Gladwell theory? Yeah, absolutely. Okay. Um, and I just lived and breathed racing. Um, but I grew up in a car business, so I was kind of around it. Dad and uncle, gearheads, we love cars. And uh, I started out in go-karts and just Took live, it just live for it. Um, in high school, I didn't really go to any school dances. I worked on my race cars every day. Yep. Um, I raced my, my senior year of high school. I raced um, in over 70 races across the country. And, uh, and I signed did by, up. By, did by that time, you understand that you were capable of... Um, of being a NASCAR driver? I think it was like age 15, 16 is when, so like prior to 15, 16, it was what I wanted to do. And I just, I was young and stupid and just knew I was gonna do it. I didn't know how, Right. you know what I mean? Like yeah. I was just doing it. I yeah. worked on my car every single day. Um, and I traveled and raced two, three times a week and that was it. And I just knew somehow I was gonna be a NASCAR driver. And it became real when I was like 15, 16 and I was actually getting like national media attention in the right. racing world. Um, I had signed with an agent when I was 15 years old, um, and I actually had manufacturers approaching me at the time uh, to come test for them to, to see what I was capable of. And um, so when I was 16, I did a test with Chevrolet, um, and I got signed through that. Um, and it, it was a test with a bunch of different drivers in it. Um, who eventually, Ray was a part of this test, Indy 500 champion, like there were some legit drivers in this deal. And, uh, and I came out towards the top of this test. I got a contract from Hendrick Motorsports, which yes. is a powerhouse. Yep. Um, and I was Jimmy Johnson's test driver for five years, um, going straight out of high school. And that's what launched my professional career as a driver. So during that five years, I raced like part-time in the NASCAR, Xfinity Series, I won the Rookie of the Year, which is kind of like the second level yep. um, to the Sprint Cup Series. And um, and that kind of built my resume testing for Hendrick that in the industry, even though I wasn't racing full-time, um, it built a resume for me that, that teams looked at me and they were like, we know this guy's driving good cars, he knows how to drive them. And I started to get opportunities with small teams that were underfunded that were in a shortage of drivers. Yeah. Um, so, so yeah, so I got opportunities to drive for these small teams, and since then I've just kind of been Building working my way up. And how, so how long have you been in the sprint series? Uh, so my first start was 2010. Got it. So six years, going on six years. And this Good is my... And, and so how did you end up here? Like you and Nidia are best friends? Or what yeah, we're just friends? BFFs, yeah. yeah. Social media, Snapchat. Social media friends. <laughs> <laughs> no, no. Just social media friends. Yeah, we're just how, social how did, media How did this show or how did the, my content first kind of hit your radar? Um, so I have a friend in Charlotte, uh, his name is Caleb Clark, and he's Caleb. a fashion designer. Yep. Um, he owns a brand called Enemy 2 Fashion. Okay. And, um, and he's someone that I've always looked up to on the creative side of things. Um, he's just always ahead of the curve uh, when it comes to 
just knowing what's going on. Yep. And um, and when he introduced me introduced me to you, I think I realized what a secret is. <laughs> <laughs> so, uh, but but really, uh, Caleb's been around uh, a long time. Him and I worked together. Um, he was at an agency uh, that represented me when I was 15, and he was their creative director. And, cool. and now he's he's a, he's an entrepreneur and uh, self-made man. Very good. All right. So, what's the first question? Um, well, man. In, in your world, in, in, um, in social media marketing, um, taking your expertise yes. and applying it to my business model, yes. which is athlete independent contractor because I'm not represented by a player's union, I'm not yes. represented by um, you know, the NFL or NBA, uh, you know, I'm a NASCAR driver, but essentially I'm responsible for my own brand, I'm responsible for my own revenue. So, yes. um, and the revenue comes in with the logos on the car? Yep. And and then appearance fees. Yep. And anything performance else? on the track. And performance on well, now the logos on the car on the car improve the performance on the track. And vice versa. Absolutely. Right. Chicken and egg game. Exactly. So the question is, what would I do if I were you? Yeah. How do I? How do we? How do I create a better um, platform? Platform. Uh, value proposition for I corporate partners. I one hundred percent believe that you should execute the daily V execution. I think there is an enormous amount of people who are watching right now. NASCAR is a humongous religion. I didn't say sport. Mm. It's a humongous, humongous Amen. religion. And I believe that there are thousands of thousands of people that would watch your 17 to 22 minute vlog. I'm sure, as a matter of fact, let's, I, you know, we haven't really done this yet. This is a good opportunity to do what I'm about to do, this. In the comment section on Facebook and YouTube, if you are, what do you call your guys self, Stefan, and videographer? Yeah. Great. Yeah, if you're an aspiring videographer, sorry, I mean, I don't know everything. Yeah, no, I know, I know my thing. Uh, if you are aspiring, and you're young, and you're a hustler, and I would assume you, th this would probably make even more sense, maybe this is not exactly how it ends up happening, but you love NASCAR. I, I would tell you, and by the way, I'm kind of jumping to conclusions, you might not want a human being following you around 24 <laughs> no, no, hours a day on a camera, but I truly believe that what we're doing with Daily V right now is very much no different than what I did in 1996 by doing e-commerce, or what I did by doing a YouTube show back in 2006, that this television like content, vlogging, and Casey and many, many other people did it before, before I did, I think what the the hardcore day in the life version of it, though, I think is quite powerful. Mm -hmm. The number one thing I would do, I, I truly believe that, and to, it's funny you're sitting here, I would almost even use this as an analogy, uh, but I'll use a different one without you sitting here, but it refers to where you sit in the NASCAR world. I think the 10th man on an NBA team right now to execute this model would fundamentally be one of the five most popular players in the NBA in three years if he had the right personality and the and was a good guy and had the right, it's just storytelling. The hell is Kim Kardashian? Right, like what, like, it's the story what the of that, like, yeah. it's, you know, like it's the story of that world. And that's like every reality TV star, it, it's just storytelling and I think that's what you should do. I think it's very black and white. I'm very proud that I'm creating a blueprint that I think is replicatable. Um, and I think that that's what you should do. I, I appreciate would, it. I, I think, love that. I, I think it would change your world. I think you're right. I think you're right. I'll double down on that. And, and, I mean, and the biggest thing that you need to figure out is <clears throat> is what access they have. I assume a lot. Mm -hmm. I've been to you know, I've been to Pocono. Like, that's where you're going. Now, yeah, right? yeah, yeah, this weekend. I went to my my father-in-law was uh, the marketing guy at the Gillette Young Guns years and years ago, mm -hmm. and so. Like, you know, like, people are filming there all the time. Like, as long as somebody can have the right access, and it's the real stories, right? Mm -hmm. Like, everybody sees Sunday or Saturday, right? Saturday, like, what about Tuesday? Like, you know, stopping and, like, driving around the country. Like, that's the real stuff. Mm -hmm. There's you're, a lot of content, you're, yeah. You were about absolutely. to double down? No, I'm, I, I mean, I would... I like doubling down. I, yeah, no, I'll <laughs> double down on that, because that's, that's been on my mind. Um, and You think uh, he's very good at Snapchat? This is the first... Uh, that was... That was a huge hit. I mean, it was really successful. And, and just like you said, I just told a story over the course of my day where, where I'm saying I'll double down on that is, you know, like you said, leave a comment. Find me somehow. It's and let's, let's make this happen. No, no, no. no. You're going to have to do a little bit of work. Yeah. Here's how it's going to happen. Well, I'll do work. Yes, yes, yes. No, no, no. no, no, no. It's yeah. very easy. Actually, we'll do the work for you. Somebody here on this team will send you the two links 
to the Facebook and the YouTube, and there are hopefully 30 to 50 people in the comment section saying me. I can afford, yeah. there's people now, I'm sure. Yeah. That, like, I will follow for free, DRock did it for free for a while. Like, I don't know what, I can tell you for sure that if you're lucky enough that you're a young kid hustler that's trying to get exposure for access to being behind the scenes in NASCAR, it's gonna change your career outcome. I think it's an absolute barter exchange. I'm not trying to get you guys to do free work even though I do it all the time and believe in it. <laughs> I have no idea if what you, if you do have the ability to pay something, travel cost, this, that, and the other thing, but that's exactly what I would do and I would be so so pumped to watch Sports Center in 17 months of the story of you that you did this and to know it's all started right here, right now. <laughs> Got it. No, really, that's like, I fully, hey, ESPN, I fully expect the first scene of the E60 to start right here, right now. <laughs> okay. <laughs> India. I'll, win, I'll win next year's Daytona 500. Well, that's it's a whole different thing. <laughs> <laughs> you would have a run yeah. to Daytona like, it was me. It was me. <laughs> I did that. <laughs> all right, let's do it. First one from Dana. Dana. Kind of tied in this question, so I know you probably don't have as much background. Yes. But, um, I applaud NASCAR for really stepping up their social media game recently. Um, in what areas do you guys think that they could improve or suggest on them to improve? So what's your point of view? Because I, you're right, I don't have as much context. Um, I, I think it is... What's happening the, with the top stars, the top ten guys right now? How are they rolling in social? Anybody in that top ten crew? You can do, is I, that, I, and not that you want to call out or not. Call yeah, out no. Anybody. I mean, I think they're doing they're doing good. I mean, the, the is leader, it a conversation with the driver? Do you hear people talking about it? Yeah, I mean, I, in my opinion, the leader of the pack is Dale Jr., which he's you know yeah, that's, I mean, that's I in his lap. I, I remember that from Mountain Dew. We're on Mountain Dew, and like from four years ago, I knew it was in his world. It, which you know that 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 falls in his lap because. Um, NASCAR dollars. gravitates towards sure. him. The, the fans love him. Of course. But what I appreciate about Dale Jr. is I feel like he's got smart people around him that have taken advantage of that, mm -hmm. and um, and they have gotten him uh, very well educated on how to be on Twitter and and getting into Instagram. And uh, you know they've got a radio show and podcasts and and he's doing a really really good job. That's awesome. You know the the uh, I feel like the challenges there is a, there's a group, probably a group of drivers that are just from a generation that just don't sure. need to. They've just mm -hmm. they they've made their living racing cars for a long time. They their their form of sponsor relations is different appearances and the things Television they've been doing for 20 years. That's right. That's right. So so for them to adapt to Snapchat, Twitter, I mean they're all on Twitter, but it's a matter of what are you Who's doing, doing on Twitter? Who's doing it? Is it them? Da, 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 da. Yeah. And what about NASCAR as a whole? Do you, you know and I think NASCAR has has taken a very serious move at social media uh, recently, whether it's uh, you know, like we talked about the Snapchat, like I took over their Snapchat, like their Snapchat story on the race weekend is phenomenal. Like I would love to see more during the week and see yep. what, you know, what else is going on. I would, I would even love to see I, in the NASCAR I, offices. I, I, honestly, like that. I honestly think that that's your white space for your, you know, daily vlog that you're about to do soon. Yep. I can't wait. I fully expect it to be live within two weeks. Yeah, absolutely. Like, there's no reason to really, <laughs> right. you know, there's plenty of me's in there. We just gotta get my wife's permission and we're good to go. That's fine. <laughs> yeah. What's your wife's name? Caitlin. Caitlin, please. This one about yep. a different sport. This guy's hair is awesome. I know, right? This is awesome. Gary, India, Landon. I just had a quick question. What did you guys think about the NCAA and their policy that uh, restricts athletes from getting sponsorships and money, essentially? I know it's kind of a big issue for them. It's a really taboo issue. About it. And, well, they kind of have a right, seeing as they're on the road 24-7. Coaches get a bunch of money, but yeah, I mean, look, everybody's got. I mean, anyway, what do you think oh. about their ethics and uh, how? What kind of business decision is that? Thank you very much, Gary. Landon, India. Yeah, how are you going to integrate that into the episode, the video? You did it. Yeah, you had it. I, put I, have it. It. I just so, have the top copy of it. Amazing. Talent, man. Talent. Uh, so I think that. Um, I, look, I think this is a hotbed issue. I think plenty of people say, well, they get their school paid for. You know, me personally, Gary, thinks it's complete horseshit. I think every college athlete should be paid, period, end of story. I think the university ex exploit it aggressively. Um, it feels very communistic. Um, I'm not a fan of it. I think that the athletes should be paid, and uh, that's how I feel about it. Very, very simple, very, very binary. Um, but I think it's a taboo issue. Like, I have a lot of friends that get mad at me when we drink a glass of wine on this issue, and they're like, but they get their college paid for, this, that, and the other thing. To me, it's just economics. 
like they're you know they're making trillions of dollars on these kids' performances. These kids are being treated like professional athletes. These kids are not going to class. These guys are practicing 40. The, the, the practice schedules of these professional athletes, especially at the tiers where the TV deals are, college, men's college basketball, you know, women's college basketball, men's college football, like, you know, I mean, softball on ESPN now, like they keep big, building bigger and bigger schedules. Like, <laughs> they're being treated like professional athletes and they are not being compensated that way. And an unbelievable majority of them never make it to the professional level mm -hmm. and ever are able to cash in on all the dollars they drop in the university. So I, I think they should be paid. I'm very, I'm, I'm pretty emotional about it for them, but it is what it is. There's plenty of things that upset me. Do you have any thoughts on that? Or? I don't know. Uh, like, I don't think I agree with you as binary as yeah. you describe it and yeah. as straightforward, but I think I could easily be weighted that way, but yeah. I look at it as, uh, you know, university is, is primary number one, needs to be a place of higher education. I didn't go to college. Yep. I wish I did. Yep. Um, I'm fortunate that I get to make my living, yep. you know, that I actually made it and I'm making a living driving. Yep. But, um, you know, I, I, it concerns me, like, if they, if they set up a way to, you know, start paying football players um, the effects of the 99% of them that don't make it professionally and what they did during their time in college when they were making $50,000 a year yep. playing professional college football yep. and not going to class because that's not because they were making their living and now all of a sudden they didn't make it, you know, and, and so I'm a little worried of some of the cause the problem, and effect there. The problem is, from my standpoint, that's a romantic point of view because those same kids are not going to class anyway. They're not pumping out of the University of Michigan and going on to have these illustrious careers because of their education. I mean, first of all, I have my own problems with college to begin with. Yeah. Like, forget <laughs> professional athletes. Like, person that goes to Michigan and leaves with a degree, reality in today's marketplace is a whole other issue. We don't have enough time for this because I can get really emotional yeah, yeah. about this. The, so the, thing that, that, the thing that's absolutely dead on that you're so right about and that is like the cornerstone of the whole argument is they are making hand over fist. Guys, it is, the that SEC is, uh, contract yes. with ESPN, the, you know, these rules were implemented in time when these universities were not making anywhere close to these dollars. It's become any, you know, Shokhar Shokhar of Mary, it's a great Russian saying, it's very basic. It's like everything is great when it's balanced. For 1961, the amount of co money colleges were making on these athletes, more in the universe karma balance fairness today, I mean, you have a star play. Do you know how many Johnny Manziel Texas A&M jerseys were sold? Mm. I mean, I get it. Anyway. I, I thought this question was really cute, so I picked it. That's great, India. That's from Thomas. <laughs> cute Thomas. Aside from <laughs> teaching money and marketing tricks, do you have any regarding love? Isn't that cute? <laughs> yeah, it's adorable. <laughs> um, my advice on love is very similar to my advice on... I actually think my business advice is actually my life advice, okay. if you really unwind it. Um, I think 5149 really matters, and that's more relationship now than love. Um, I think that, you know, I always say the magic is in the gray. I think that's how love is. Like, it's not calculated. Like, you know, it's, it's, it, it's just going to happen in a lot of times, in a lot of ways. So I actually think all the advice I give actually executes to a, a love genre. I think the relationship part is more interesting to me. The 5149, the listening and counterpunching, a lot of those things, the way I think about customer and business relationships are very much the way I think of relationships in general. And that's how I've rolled. As far as, like, the falling in love part, the serendipity, it's very similar to like the things I think about business where you can't control what you can't control and don't be crippled by it. Um, that would probably be my biggest advice. Got any, got any I, advice, married man? I, yeah. I, How I, long I, have you been married? Uh, going on four years. It's awesome. Yeah. Yeah. It's, uh, I think you, you, you want someone that'll just compliment, that's an addition to you. You know, I mean, uh, my wife is everything that I lack. Yeah, I'd love some. You know, I, I'm being so romantic. It's, but like in so many ways, it's it's the cliche that everybody says it is. I mean, you know, I, I look at my wife, and and she's capable of so many things that I'm not capable sure. of, and that's why I need her in my life. Sure. So I mean, for me, I that's married what my I mom. Yeah. Yeah. You married my, your mom? Yeah, my wife and my mom have a lot, a lot of similarities. Other than my my wife is very organized and structured, and my mom's not. Other than that. A lot of their personalities are similar. Interesting. Yeah. They say a lot of guys end up doing that, wearing their mom. Or, they, I mean, it's, it's, I think the mom is the North Star for guys that they go either hardcore to the left or to the right. My dad married the anti. Uh -huh. Maybe mom. it's a generational thing, like maybe it skips around. It skips.
All right, let's go, India. Do you have a Q question? No. I just have one. I like Q questions. Um, How do you, from GR, I don't know his real name, how do you feel that social media has shaped NASCAR? Is it good or bad as a driver, or good as bad as a fan, also? Um, Well, uh, so our entire business model is supported by corporate support, so. As is almost everybody. Yeah, I I guess that's true. Um, So, you want to show your personality, but you the, but you can't. You it's easy to second guess your personality. If like, well, what if I have a sponsor that isn't gonna like Actually, this? To your, or, to your point, it's even further, right? Like, you know, football player shows his full personality. Right. You know. Well, and, and, and actually, contract. Da, 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 da. Where I say our whole business model is supported by corporate support is because it takes that to run the NASCAR team. Like, we can't survive just off the prize money. We right. have to have corporate support, yep. or somebody has to underwrite the program. Yep. So, so that's that's kind is of. There, is there in NASCAR some billionaires that have underwritten some programs? Oh yeah, absolutely, absolutely. I mean, there's there's plenty of them, mm-hmm. you know. And, and and I mean, my team is a uh, um, our car owner is is a racer. You know, mm-hmm. he's he's not making money off of our race he team. He's game. a racer. He loves the game. And so, you know, we we search hard for sponsors because. Uh, because it helps our team and because we've got a passion for the sport, we want to grow the sport, we want to grow our partners. Uh, but at the end of the day, my car owner, you know, he steps up. You know, what, at what percentage, is it the 25% and down? Like actually, in the bottom third of yep. like financial teams, yep. how much time do you think the driver and the core two or three top people spend on the business part of like hustling for sponsors, like, like, what what percentage of what percentage of time do you spend on thinking about trying to secure doing appearance like hustling? Man, I I, I mean, I spend every day one? thinking about it. I don't. Right. I, I struggle. It, it's hard to apply it sometimes. Yeah. I I don't do enough. I think too much. I probably don't do enough. We you know I travel Thursday to Sunday, so by the time I'm can sit down in my office, can actually act on thoughts, and can do things. I'm on a plane and head to the racetrack where I have to focus on the race car. Right. So, so there's definitely a struggle of balance and executing, right? Um, you know, that's where we talk about content generation and things like that. Like, man, you know, for, for me, this struggle isn't, I guess, what content do I create? It's how do I execute it? How when a, when a, when when a driver wins a big race, that's a bottom. 20% financial like how rare is that uh, it's it's pretty rare but NASCAR is really they're, they're changing the rules in terms of how the cars are built to help accommodate more, more parity more parity because it's uh, the greatest thing the NFL did yeah absolutely I mean it, it's it's hard you know people don't realize um, how much goes into the race car and how many engineers it takes and how many you know what what adding finding a secret bend in your body that adds 50 pounds of downforce, I can feel that. That's just, that's this right here, right? Yeah. Pushing down on your car. I can feel that in the car, it makes me go faster. Well, you know, some of the big teams, they're, they're just so much more capable of finding sure. five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten more yeah. of those things. So people don't realize that, it, you know, that, that, that lack of parity is something that NASCAR is very aware of, that, they, that they're trying to improve, and that, that's what helps teams like mine. But I mean, do at you, the end of the day, we just kind of focus on. Do you have a sponsorship person on your team, or do you? Yeah, oh yeah, we've got a marketing staff. Yeah, yep. very cool. Interesting stuff. I enjoyed it. Question of the day. You get to ask. Question of the day. Oh man. Yeah, you get know. to ask the Vayner Nation any question you want, and they have to answer it. It's the rule. <laughs> um. All right. If you were a NASCAR fan at one point in your life, why aren't you now? Oh, interesting. So you're asking the small subgroup. Yeah. Well, the Vayner Nation, or or the people that are in Vayner Nation that that knew, that know about NASCAR. How about maybe why, let why, me widen so, it out a little bit. If you know about NASCAR, why are you not you don't currently? Tune in. Why are you right now not currently a NASCAR? Yeah. Why are you right? not engaged? Whether you in were NASCAR. once or whatever. Have you ever watched NASCAR? Don't hurt. No, there's really. no feelings here. No. Stefan? See, not really. Is that that's the guy I'm targeting? Yeah, I've seen it on TV. Have you watched but ever really full race? In, right? Why don't Have you, you ever watched full race? No. 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 One. 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 Got it. Because we scheduled the uh, <laughs> thing last week. And... <laughs> it was a real pleasure. You're real I appreciate it, man. Thank you. you. You keep asking questions. We'll keep answering them.
What's up guys, hope you enjoyed the show. Uh, please, do I get to link it up anywhere? Is it like in here? Or is it down below? Is it in print or is it in my video? Uh, no, it'll be down left. It'll be down to your left. It's here, down to my left? Like right here there's a button? For them to subscribe to my uh, YouTube video? A little bug, yeah. yeah, it's a little buggy thing? Yeah. That's right guys, click this! That's right, use that. <laughs>